Welcome to another edition of the Ballot Power Show. I am your host, uh, Tijan Ba. This is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And today we are here at the Banjul Arch. I have a young man here, a very, very active young man in Banjul. Um, our guest today is no other than uh, Mr. Janko. Uh, Mr. Janko, welcome to the Ballot Power Show. Uh, Mr. Ba, thank you very much. As you rightly said, my name is Adudu Oli Janko. I am honored and it's a privilege to be hosted here. So, uh, Mr. Janko, let's get to know you a little bit. What are your roles? What have you been doing in Banjul here? Well, uh, I was born and brought up in Banjul here. I did my schooling in Banjul up to senior schooling. Then from there, I proceeded to the college. At this point in time, my profession is teaching, and I'm also into youth activist. I'm the current vice chairperson of the Banjul Youth Committee. Yeah, that's who I am in a nutshell. Yes. So you have a very impressive CV, and you are somebody who is very active and very very involved in in issues regarding youth and and you know and development in Banjul here. So we'll be talking more about this thing. But briefly, um, let's talk about the. The, the, the draft constitution. Uh, we have seen recently that uh, uh, the constitution was passed to parliament and it was rejected. So, what are your views for us on the work of the of the of the commission? And do, in your own views, do you think that they have uh, fulfilled their mandate? Well, I think uh, they did a very good job. The CRC, the Constitutional uh, Review Commission, they did an extremely wonderful job in trying to gather the inputs of the people. Their consultations were excellent. They went all the way down to the provinces. They had series, not once, but more than two or three consultations with people, with different types of people, the elderly, the young, the women, the religious leaders. They made sure that they captured all the, 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 the people that needed to at least share their voice. Uh, and uh, the issue of you know the, the draft being rejected, I was totally disappointed and I'm still disappointed. Okay, so the, you mentioned that the draft, um, there was a sufficient consultation done by the draft. So let's, let's look at the youth um, and the involvement of youth in the whole process in, in, in coming up with the draft constitution. Uh, in your own perspectives, what, how do you see the involvement of youth in the process in making of the constitution? Well, the youth were involved. Uh, because as I said earlier on, in, uh, particularly in Banjul, in their consultations, anytime they are supposed to come to Banjul here, being it in any of these you know, constituencies, the youth should be represented. We will be sent a letter, that's the uh, BYC, the Banjul Youth Committee, and we will be represented. And when we go there, uh, we normally find their young people you know, engaging. Uh, they are engaged and they always you know, bring out their know outputs and make sure that at least their, their, their wishes or their voices are you know are captured in the, in that constitution in that draft constitution so definitely they were participating okay so so the draft um, was was taken to parliament and it was first the draft and the report was forwarded to the president and you know which was later taken to to parliament for voting and the par parliament rejected it so as a youth leader, um, what do you think is the, is the reaction of young people um, af after the rejection of the, uh, of the draft? W as a youth, somebody who is very active, what is the general view of youth? Well, majority of the uh, young people were disappointed. In fact, they went as far as calling their National Assembly members, trying to convince them, telling them they have to, you know, vote for this uh, for that draft constitution because uh, looking at majority of those norms they didn't go back to their people to engage them to tell them what was going on uh, looking at the Gambia we are you know the illiteracy level is higher than the literate level so some of those norms should have gone to their people engage them discuss with them and uh, allow them to dictate them because those were the same people that voted for them to become norms so majority of the young people were disappointed because looking at that draft constitution, uh, there was a clause that my, you know, that mandated political parties, you know, to be given chances, opportunities to uh, to the young people uh, when it comes to you know elections. So I think 
uh, that thing being debunked now, majority of the young people I know and I've seen, they are all disappointed. So young people are disappointed with the outcome of the vote of the draft constitution. So most people will say, most young people will say that the, the draft is, is very, very progressive because um, it, it have, um, it, it's, it's, it's more um, with the youth than the, than the 1997 constitution. Uh, because in the draft you'll see that um, youth empowerment is, 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 is enshrined in the, in the draft. And also, you know, even uh, youth participation, it's, it's highly encouraged in the draft constitution. Because they will tell you that even political parties, each political party should have 10% of your youths, you know, vying for seats at the parliament. So, what's your view as a as a youth activist on these issues? Well, as I said earlier on, you know, we youths, you know, we are all disappointed because uh, it means all that was, you know, uh, done for the youths in uh, that uh, draft constitution is now zero. It, it has now been, you know, thrown into the trash because that draft constitution it's no more so young people we are empowered young people we are encouraged if you look at the our population 60 percent of the population constitute of the youth so the young people definitely uh, are the leaders and uh, they have to start being leaders now you cannot sit and be saying that look we are leaders okay we are future leaders so we should be leaders today and leaders tomorrow you know the work should start now Yes, you know, the elderly have already dug and laid the foundation, so we should be the ones solidifying the foundation. Yeah, so I think that constitution definitely, even if you should wake up an insane person from sleep and you ask that person, look, these two constitutions, I want you to judge them, which one is better, the insane person will definitely choose the previous draft constitution. So it means the, the draft constitution is very, very, very progressive. So. Let's talk more on youths and related with the, the draft constitutions and recent happenings. Um, we've seen that young people in this country are not taking the lead in decision making, maybe in business, in civil society. Even some will say that the, even the draft constitution, the, at the age at which it, it pegged uh, for, uh, for a person to be president, is, is, um, it's, it's, it's discriminatory to young people. So, why do you think young people are not coming forward to participate in politics? You know, to take up leadership positions. You know, to, to take like to take the, the destiny of this country in their own hands. What do you think are some of the hindrances? Well, uh, the number one hindrance there is like uh, encouragement, incentive. Uh, the young people of this country they are not lazy. They need incentive. They need to be encouraged. You know, uh, when it comes to education and other areas. If you look at when you go to the university and other institutions, you find so many young people there. And every day, so many of these young people will be uh, facing challenges, difficulties when it comes to scholarship and all other stuff. Because public uh, offices are offices that require uh, the technical know-how. You know, you need to have this stuff. And I can see majority of the young people nowadays, they are into education. They are trying to capacitize themselves. So I think scholarship should uh, not be a hindrance like uh, even university education should have been free majority of this like uh, higher institution should have been free for young people because i've seen two or three young people that will say that well to acquire scholarship for me to further my education or to go to university is going to be a problem so uh and and also in the business business sector you know i, I think they should look at that the young people they should minimize the taxes for them there should be incentives for young people and these young people going into this entrepreneurship and technical and vocational schools, when they come back, they should be given incentives, at least to start up their own business, to start up something. I think if that happens, you know, young people will have the zeal, you know, will have the courage to go into politics. And also the other thing is the, the misconception, you know. Nowadays, people as a young person, if they see you trying to associate yourself with any political party, the first thing they will say is, my friend, this is for the elderly, this is not for you. At, at least you want to uh, ruin your future, you want to jeopardize your future without knowing that life itself is an everyday politics. So I think if that area is clearly defined to people that look, politics is meant for everybody because if you are not involved in the politics, then you cannot have a say in your, the affairs of your country. 
So the young people need to be aware of that, need to know that. And they also need to know that as young people, there's, uh, there is only uh, one person who can at least fight and advocate 100% for your right. That is if a young person is representing you. Yeah. So, yes, so it's very, very important that we have youth participation, you know, at all levels of decision making. So very, very important. Let's let's come to the other issues affecting young people in the Gambia at this point in time. What are those major issues, you know, that are affecting the progress of young people? I know you've been work with different youth groups in Gambia and stuff like that. You know, you are into sport, you have a career in teaching, you are also a very active member of the development association in Banjus. So what are some of these issues that young people are facing in Gambia? Well, I said it here earlier on. Uh, the, the main problem is incentive. The incentive is very broad. Incentive can be in a form of scholarships. And when you look at majority of the young people of any nation, they always into sports. And sports is a way out of poverty. Exactly. Sports itself is a politic. You know, uh, looking at the Gambia, our population is not very big. So how many young people are involved in the sports? And how many different types of sports that are we playing in the Gambia? You look at, like, let's say, like 15% of the Gambian youths, they are all into football. But how many of those youths are benefiting and uh, enriching themselves? You know, are, are, are excelling from are transiting from the Gambia to those higher leagues? It's only a few of them. So that's one is discouraging. That's one is an uh, impeding factor. Then you come to the educational sector. How many young people are graduating every year? And how many job opportunities are available here in the Gambia? So uh, all these two issues are very, very important. The incentive when it comes to like uh, uh, job insecurity and when it comes to like motivating the young people that are into sports, entrepreneurship and uh, other sectors. So I think those two areas, the government really, really needs to look at into those institutions, uh, uh, sorry, into those areas. And also uh, the issue of coming up with like uh, skills, technical and vocational skills. When you look at the Gambia, majority of the people that are into this skills work, they are the outsiders, the foreigners. You see only few Gambians that are into uh, these uh, areas. But one thing is, even if we are to build like 1,000 skill centers in the Gambia, after building that, after capacitizing the young person, at the end of his or her uh, a career or at the end of his or her studies you need to give that person an incentive so that that person can go and start up with something mm -hmm. yeah i think those are some of the areas so, so yes yeah, so let's talk a little bit on the solutions to some of these problems um, where do you think the solution to some of these problems like is it the young people themselves or is it we need more government support where do you think that what are the solutions to some of these problems yeah, I think some of the solutions should be the government. The government should try and tighten its belt and uh, help the young people with incentives, with scholarships, incentives for the entrepreneurs. They should also look into sports because all these young people, they are all Gambians. If they are provided incentives in sports, at least they will also help their families. They can better their lives because sports is a way out of poverty. For example, look at uh, Uruguay. They have a population of around 3 million and Uruguay they are doing very well in nearly all the sporting activities. For example, if Gambia is participating in like 10 different types of sports, how many youths should be provided with job? And if all those 10 sporting disciplines are paying those young people, at least you will minimize you know, the issue of job insecurity. So I think that's very, very important. So the government needs to at least be focusing on sports. Look at the national budget, how much is allocated uh, to sports is very minimal and majority of the people that are involved in sports they are the young people so it doesn't mean those young people uh, they don't have aim or uh, they are dropouts no you know those young people also if they uh, earn something in sports or if they excel and go to the international level they will come back again and invest and uh, complement the efforts of the government yeah exactly exactly um, young people you know, they have the population, they have the power, and they have the potential, you know, to contribute immensely to the development of this country. Um, so let's 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 come back to a little bit of the of the of the draft because the draft is uh, is the document that is supposed to take us forward. You know, so going forward with the draft now, um, what do you think could be the role of young people in 
bringing back the draft, what, what do you think can be done? And, and in what way can we enhance the involvement of young people in changing the destiny of this country? Well, I think like uh, youth groups, CSOs throughout the Gambia should be advocating for the, for the coming back of the draft constitution because it has clauses that will empower the young people. So we should be engaging our authorities. We should be engaging our norms, you know, telling them that, look, we need this draft constitution to come back. I think that is the only way for the norms to go back, sit and realize that, look, this draft constitution is for the interest of everybody. It's, the, it's for the interest of the young people. And some of those young people are people that voted for me into office. So I think that is the only thing that can at least trigger the coming back of that draft constitution. Yeah. So it's very, very important that, you know, you know, young people participate in the process and we've seen that the draft has been rejected lately and you know it's, it's incumbent upon young people to take up the responsibility you know to, to change that. So um, Amadou now moving forward um, we have seen some of the issues that young people are facing here. Um, we have issues of, of unemployment, you know lack of participation in decision making, in, in issues that affect young people really. So what will be your advice to your fellow young people out there? What will you have to say? Uh, we've seen that we have few who are very active who are trying to make change. But maybe some will say that the, the majority out there are not, are, not, are not really coming because maybe they feel you know, they don't have the space or they will not be given the opportunity. So what's your advice to your fellow young people? Yes, I think some time ago I said it on air with one of the media houses. I said, let's, let's utilize any opportunity. Let's make it while the sun shines. Right now, there are some uh, government-funded projects that are going on trying to create scholarship for young people, especially girls. Uh, let them grab them. Let them go because they are tuition-free. Yeah, they are tuition-free. Let them go and make good use of those scholarships. Come back, then they can start, you know, banging the doors of the government because the government has already provided free scholarship for you. Go and capacitize yourself with skills. From there, you can go and knock on their doors and tell them, look. I would want an incentive whereby I can go and set up my own business, be it entrepreneurship or opening your own workshop or your workplace. And the other thing is the young people, you know, should stop saying that, you know, the elderly have to give us chance, have to give us chance. Look, we should go and start working with them, start telling them that, look, you have already dug the foundation and the foundation is there. We should be the one who should be solidifying the foundation. And we should also be pressurizing our norms, our authorities, and telling them that we are not the features of tomorrow, we are the features of today. And anything that has to do with young people, they should be involving the young people. Anything that is for the young people, and the young people are not there, then it's surely not for the young people. Okay, Amadou, um, finally, let's, 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 let's talk about the future of young people. Like, say, in the next 10, 15 years, where do you see young people? Because by then, you will have saved you know, the young people will have to be leaders. Like they will say, young people are leaders of tomorrow. Where do you see the Gambia and where do you see young people going? Well, uh, anyway, to be frank, the young people of this country are determined, as I said. If you go to the educational sector, you have thousands and thousands of young people pursuing different careers. And the majority, you know, are very determined. So come in the next 15 years' time, you will see so many young people contesting, vying for political positions and uh, then uh, uh, the young people uh, will, will definitely deliver because when they are given the space they will deliver they will deliver a lot yeah I'm sure about that so um, thank you very much uh, Mr. Janko for coming on the ballot power show I'm your host and from the Banjul Arch uh, we're saying until we come again uh, thank you so much for watching bye